And amen and amen. If God, you know, I always say about my life, whatever God cannot give me, may I never get it. Whatever God cannot do, may it remain undone. Hallelujah. Wherever God cannot take me, may I never reach there. Praise the Lord. That is the statement of a man that is settled in God. Praise God. And does he actually always come through? He does. Tell your neighbor, calm down. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Amen. God is with you. Praise God. And like I said last week, um, Sunday, just doing the word, just doing what the word of God says. You live the, you live the normal Christian life. And if, like I said, if you need a miracle, it shows up. Praise the Lord. And even when you don't see an immediate, instant miracle, you will see the obvious hand of God in your life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's get into God's word today. Amen. We are actually on our teaching the gifts of the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit. Today we will try to get into... Wow, we will try to get into tongues and interpretation and even prophecy. We will try it. Amen and amen. Sister um, Funke has said um, this is our last session on the gifts of the Spirit. And I, so pray for me because I have to, I have to co- try to comply with that word of um, prophecy. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we believe and receive wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you. We are edified. And your name is glorified in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we're looking at the, the teaching, the gifts of the Spirit, and we're looking at tongues, right? Interpretation and then prophecy. And the first thing you need to know is the fact that you are supernatural. Say, I'm supernatural. I'm supernatural. And being supernatural is not just a figure of speech, it is a fact. The reason why we tell you that you're supernatural is so that you will see yourself like that. Praise the Lord. Because awareness is the first key to participation. Praise the Lord. Say, I'm supernatural. supernatural. Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. I am supernatural. It's a consciousness that I must carry every day. And when I choose to forget, I remind myself via words. Right? God gave you your mouth not just to eat, but to speak his word. Praise the Lord. Church, praise the Lord. Because your mouth is how you control your mind. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. When you are speaking, your mind stops to listen. Right. Amen. So look at it. You are supernatural. What made you supernatural? You have received the Spirit. See, I've received the Spirit. I I need to understand what I mean by supernatural. Look at the words. Supernatural. That means that... There is natural. Then when we say supernatural, we are saying that the person we are calling supernatural is above the natural sphere. Meaning that so the things that actually can be done through this particular person is not normal. Hallelujah. That's why we call it supernatural. Right? So say I may say it again. I am supernatural. So, the resurrection made me supernatural. Now, what is the meaning of supernatural? Supernatural means that you are someone who death does not have a hold on. Praise the Lord. Church, praise the Lord. Now, when we talk about death, we are talking about spiritual death. Right? When you got born again, the Bible says that the immortality death has been abolished someone say abolished concerning you that is what makes you supernatural death has been abolished concerning you meaning that you now have life praise the lord praise the lord amen and amen so pastor do you just say that i will never leave this earth you will leave this earth but you can never die Because now you are one with God. All that can happen is that your body, your body will drop on this earth and your spirit goes to be with the Lord. Praise the Lord. But death has no hold over you anymore because you have received the spirit. But by that receiving the spirit, you became supernatural because God now lives inside you. Say, God lives in me. Say, I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. 
Mark 16 verse 17. You see, you are supernatural. How did you become supernatural? Verse 16 says, he that believeth, I mean that is baptized. Meaning to believe is to be baptized into Christ. How do you get baptized into Christ? It's not by getting into water. It's by believing the gospel. Can we get a believing amen? It says he that believes and is baptized. Baptizo. Entering into something. He that believes and is baptized is saved. He that does not believe. That's why you will not sit there and is not baptized. It's not because it was told. He that does not believe is what? Is, is damned. Then he now says verse 17. Mark 16, 17. These signs. Someone say these signs. These signs. So that means they are signs. They are pointers. They are supernatural pointers to the one that has believed the message. And then you will see that he says these signs follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. So when I become born again, devils become subject to you by function of birth. Hallelujah. Church, hallelujah. When I get, it is not because of what I did. It is because of whom I believe. When I got born again, I was sealed with the Holy Ghost of promise. The moment I was sealed with the Holy Ghost of promise, I was raised with Christ. So when Christ died, who died? I died. When Christ was raised up, who was raised up? I was raised up. And when I was raised up, how was I raised up? I was raised up far above how many? All principalities and powers. A fact. Not a prayer point. A fact. You would now have to deeper profit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, God. I wanted to say it's too early. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Mm. When I was raised, when he was raised, I was raised. 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 Glory to God. I was raised together with him. That means I am, that means I am supernatural. I walk with that sense of understanding and that sense of authority. I don't care. When things come my way, I remember who I am. I'm supernatural. Yes. Supernatural. Yes. You know, when I got a revelation of these truths, you know what? I, I went to the stores and I bought a Superman belt. Yes. I said, I need to remind myself of who I am. And you know, because I always wear belts because the tailors have not yet gotten my size. So I know that I need to get something that follows me everywhere. So I bought a Superman belt. For over six years, I was wearing it everywhere. Because I just needed to be reminded. So when I get into a time or a phase or something that is tough, I look at my waist. I'm supernatural. Glory to God. That's what Moses, the paprika man in Shutaya. That's what Moses told the children of Israel. He said, oh, these things I'm telling you, write it upon your front letter. Put it all around so that you can see it. Oh, Lord, I'm getting too drunk for this meeting. I need to teach now. He says, says, put it upon the front list that you may see it. When you see it, you will remember who you are. Ah! When things get tough, you remember. I'm supernatural. In the midst of difficult situations, I am supernatural. He says, these signs, the vehicle pote. You know what? Just come and preach. Because the Holy Ghost won't allow me here. The Pupra Panika Testuva Jesus. The fire of God, the glory of God is resident in man now. And all of creation have been waiting by prophecy. Who are these people? It's you. It's you. For the Spirit now doth mightily rest on you. In you. Christ in you. I'm supernatural. He says these signs will follow. We don't pray, it follows. Are you hearing me? It follows. It follows. He says, they shall cast out devils from that day. Devils are not people that you pay attention to. They are not. No, you don't. No, you don't. For you are raised up together with him. Far above all principalities and powers. Far above. It doesn't matter what they say. It doesn't matter how it looks. It doesn't matter how the devil confuses you or says anything about it. He's a liar. You are raised far above all principalities. It is a sign of the resurrection. Praise God. He says, what else? They shall speak with new tongues. They shall speak with new tongues. So speaking in tongues is a sign of the resurrection on the inside of me. Hallelujah. 
Say, Pastor, why don't we understand it? It's because it did not come from your brain. Speaking in tongues is not from your brain. It is you, your, your mouth, it is your tongue giving vocal expression to the spirit that is within you. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. How many people can speak in tongues? Everyone that believes. Yes. Everyone that believes. Pastor, you know what? I don't just like this in tongues thing. It doesn't matter. You already have it. Hallelujah. 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 It is a sign of the resurrection. That is how God says you will know my own people. I will give them a language. A language that is of our kind. There is English language. There is Mexican. There is Spanish. And then there is now another language. The language of the people who are supernatural. These people are supernatural. And that tongue is a proof of the supernaturalness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're, we're, we're looking into it. We're looking into it. Look at First Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter 12. In First Corinthians chapter 12, we see it so clearly that there are things called the gifts of the spirits. And in verse 10, it tells us, uh, and to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the descending of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretation of tongues. Praise the Lord. To these tongues, interpretation, and prophecy, it's important that you see something that Paul is trying to communicate to us in the Bible. Look at it there. It says it's there in verse 13. It says, For by one spirit, you know, we've been talking about baptism. For ba are you in verse 13? For by one spirit, we are all. How are you baptized? By one into the body. Which body is that? The body of. We are baptized by one spirit, whether we are born or free. Oh God, he says, we have all been made to drink of the spirit, into the spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. I need to understand what Paul is trying to say here. Paul is trying to talk about the body of Christ and how the body of Christ will function. He's not trying to say to us that, you know what, when you got born again, you are baptized, you entered a body. And the body has different parts. Praise the Lord. Look at it. It now says there, right? It says, verse 15. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not the body. Is, this, is it therefore not the body? What is it trying to help you see here before we get into the things of the Spirit? It's trying to help you see the importance of every member in the local church. You know, there's a tendency to always say, you know what? Pastor D is the one that's got something. Brother Timothy doesn't have. And there's a way to say, you know what? Everybody is fine. I might just live my life anyhow. God is actually saying through this scripture that everybody is important. Everybody is a part. You know, no matter you are, however you look at it, every part of your body is actually important. It, when you say you are healthy, that means every part of the body is functioning well. If one part of your body is not functioning well, would you be termed a healthy person? No, because one part, it might say, you know what, do you know how many cells you have in your body? Thousands. All manner of things are in this body. But if one is out of sync, you can't be healthy. So body, God is now saying, that is the same way the body of Christ is. The functioning, the beauty, the glory of the body of Christ is where everybody, someone say everybody, everybody is playing his part. So when we're talking about gifts of the spirit, you don't say, oh, no, 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 that's for, oh, no, no, I'm not part, no, 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 everybody is a part of the body. The Bible says each joint supplying its own. You must understand, you must take the responsibility to understand that when you are not supplying, you're causing a deficiency in the body. That makes you very responsible to your local church. It makes you responsible as a Christian. When I am not supplying, I am actually causing pain to others. When I don't show up with a word, a tongue, an interpretation, when I don't show up to serve, I am actually causing a, a deficiency. You must, I didn't say it, right? You know, you know, it's this kind of revelation that you don't need anybody pursuing you to do the things you ought to do, serving the brethren. Look at it there. He says, if one, if you, like, let's go to verse 16. If the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, what is the eye? The signature of attention, where everyone will look at right you know says oh if you say i am not the eye you say okay if i'm not the eye i am not part of the body you say are you not part of the body yes you are every part is important praise the lord Hallelujah. praise
praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If the whole body were an eye, remember, think about it. If everybody was Pastor D, who would be Sister Funke? You know, you always need a Sister Funke in your midst. You do. You do. You, you, you know, who, 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 who will be? So he's now saying, look at it there. If everybody was an eye, where would be the air? So everybody has a part to play. He's trying to say that, see, before we talk about the gifts of the Spirit, or while we're talking about the gifts of the Spirit, understand that we are talking about body dimension. Everybody must be playing his parts. Everybody must be turning up, showing up, functioning in the things of the Spirit. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. You know, you know if you want to follow the contest, they now say, you know, everybody is playing his own part. He now says, but God has now set in the church. Where the, look at verse 18. God has done what? Set in the church every one of in the body as it pleased him. God has set in the church as it pleased him. Then when we, because of our time, we are, all, we are just moving forward. We are moving forward. Then you get to a particular place in verse 28. Because you're getting the point. He's saying everybody. Nobody is not important. Everybody is important. Everybody must be playing his part. Nobody must be thinking, I am not the I, so I must not do this. No, everybody is functioning with the same mindset. Everybody understands that my part to play, I must be faithful in it. My being not faithful in it affects another person. It affects the body of Christ. You must see the body actually as a body. If your body, if one part, if your leg decides not to function, you won't go to work. Or they'll carry you in a wheelchair. Why? And that's, that, that's a problem, right? So everybody must be showing up. Everybody must be functioning. That's the point. Hallelujah. He now says in verse 28, And God has set some in the church, first apostles. So he now starts to say, while we are all members of the same body, God now set some elder, elders in the church. He now gives you the name, apostles, prophets. Look at it. He now says, apostles, prophets, teachers, miracles gifts of healing helps government diversity of tongues where did god set them in the where did god set them how many people here can see in that place in verse 28 you see diversity of tongues then the next question you see there is because the, i'm starting here to get somewhere the next question you see there is are all apostles the answer is obviously no are all prophets, are all teachers, are all miracle workers, do all operate the gift of healing, do all speak with tongues? The answer is no. Right? Be now, the point is, people have used this to say believers should not speak in tongues. But I want you to notice here that God has already told us. God is, already, God is not talking about the, the normal operations of tongues that you have as a gift. God is talking about the office. Someone say the office. The office of tongues and interpretation. So there are people in the body of Christ, most of the times operating in the prophetic office, where which they actually are very, very gifted in the, let me put it that way, their office allows them by functioning to speak in tongues and interpret. Right? So this is an office here. So because the fact is that the fact that everybody is not a prophet and everybody is not an apostle is also clear that everybody is not actually in that office. That is correct. But it, it did not say anything about the fact that as a believer, you have the ability to speak in tongues and interpret. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So individuals, individuals in, in times in their lives, they can be put. Like, for example, I started off my journey a believer. I moved into the office of an evangelist. After that, God moved me to a pastor and he keeps moving me about because I'm free to move. Praise God. Right? You, so, he, he, he can move like that for you to do something within the body. Praise the Lord. But that is not now for you to say, you know what? The speaking in tongues is not our thing because we are talking about a different thing. Those 28, 29, 30 is talking about mini, of ministry gifts. We are talking today about tongues and interpretation, that which the believer has at his disposal. Praise the Lord. Church, praise the Lord. Look at 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1. It says, follow after... Okay, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1. Are we there now? I'm going too fast, right? I know, I know, I know, I know. Sister Ayola has already told me. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First Corinthians 14, verse 1. Follow after. Follow after. I want everyone today. Follow after. What is my pursuit in the things of the Spirit? 
Love. If, if the love work is out the door in anything Christian, it actually ceases to make sense, even if it is profiting others. Praise the Lord. Pray, and you must know. Hallelujah. What is the motive behind my activities? It must be love. love. The moment it is not love, step back, pray. Remember again how much God loves you and shoot again. In our kingdom, it's not just activity. It is love, birth, activity. Hallelujah. It's, you know, when love is the one driving you, I, I always say that I thank God and I love what people do, uh, like, you know, again, Sister Funke, Sister Funke is in the follow up department. I thank God for what she does, calling people, talking to people, telling people, come to church, are you okay? But I always tell people that when the love of God dawns on you, it changes you to being another man. Your activities are no longer regulated by a follow up team. Your activities are regulated by the compulsion that comes from the love work. Amen. Why do I do what I do? The love of God. You know when I say I do like I'm, I'm preaching, I'm not talking about me. Because it's not everything I do for love. I'm just joking. Praise God. <laughs> All right. Follow after charity, charity and, and desire spirituals. How will I show that I am following after love in a local church? How, you, see, you know, you, you need to understand how God measures things. God measures things not by how you measure it. God says the way I know you are actually pursuing love when you are in a local church is that your desire is spiritual things. This, this is a very, very heavy statement. Look at God's estimation of the love work amongst the saints. God's estimation of the love work amongst the saints. How will, how will, for example, how does, how does God estimate your love work amongst the saints? Your desiring spirituals. It's, it's key. Look at it again. Desire. What is that word there, desire is born? Don't be normal. Don't be okay. Don't be okay being normal, not operating the, spirit, the things of the spirit. It must be a top burner. You know, a lot of people have different desires. Someone say, I desire to be the prime minister at 35. Beautiful earthly goal. I desire to be the top 10 bankers in this country. Beautiful earthly goal. And you, what would they do? They would do the courses they need to do. Networking. All the other things they need to do to actually get to that desire. And it's okay from a point of view of the physical. How many people know that you're, you're here on earth? And so you have to use common sense. Common sense actually outside, you know, we should not be teaching these things, but common sense outside of the local church as it relates to your circulars will mean that you have the ability to network. You can't be frowning up and down. You meet people, you talk, and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, you will need that communication. How you talk, how you are approachable, how you are ready to help people. You know, it will help you in those aspirations. Amen and amen. Outside of the local church. And just circular things, right? right? And so we're not talking about desire. So when I, right, want to function the way God wants me to function, I desire spiritual. So uh, you find an earthly person and you see very people, people that are not born again, they have pursuits. Have you ever seen a, the pursuit of a man that wants to lose weight? He wake up at five, wake up at six, doing all of those things, ensuring that he's doing it, right? And some ladies like that, they'll do it, they'll do it. And their goal is a perfect summer body. Are you getting it? It's a desire. I want to be able to flex and flaunt the way others are doing it. And so it will make me not eat the shawarma. It will make me not eat the burger. I am doing all of these things. And the reason why I'm doing it is it is the desire that is born. I will, it didn't say I don't feel like eating the burger. But I stopped to eat it because my goal and desire is a summer body. So, so the idea is this. So we know how to do these things. So the desire for the things of the spirit. So there are times I just would maybe want to sit down and binge and watch TV all day. There are things that might make me just want to not. But the desire to ensure I walk in love. To manifest the things of the spirit. And people in my local church makes me put up the TV. Then I pray in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Hallelujah. So, Pastor Dio, uh, this Christian life. We, we pray. When desire is born in you will be happy to pray 
Because, you see, I always tell people, when you understand what the things of the Spirit can do, you will never ever complain about prayer again, ever in your life. Even if it is your last strength, you just say, you know what, I know I'm tired, but I'll pray in the Holy Ghost. If you just got a glimpse of the revelation, if you only really knew that God cannot move, God cannot do anything on the earth legally. You see, you see, I cannot walk up to God and say, why are you on the earth? You have no right. You must be able to say, it was Brother Tosin that told me to come up. For God to operate on the earth, there must be a legal right for him to operate. Yeah. And that legal right is not whispering, it's prayer. Hallelujah. So my desire gets me into activities. Just like in the world, my desire will get me into obvious activities. Hallelujah. My desires and the things of the Spirit get me into obvious activities. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Desire spirituals. Then he says, if as you are desiring spirituals, I'm still in 1 Corinthians 14 verse 1. As you are desiring spirituals, he says, but rather that you prophesy. Are you seeing it there? He says, look at it again. For follow after charity and desire spiritual gift, but rather that ye may prophesy. He's trying to say, guys, as it comes to this spiritual thing in um, business, right? Desire, spirituals. But at the lowest level, or at the level of where we start to stock from, you must be one that prophesies. That's what he's saying here. Prophesy. Then he's not trying to explain tongues and prophecy. Look at verse 2. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto God but men. Honestly, between you and I. Look at it again. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto God but speaketh not unto men but God. Speaketh not unto men but unto speaketh not unto men but unto brothers. Why then do you not pray? When I pray in the Holy Ghost, who am I praying to? Speaking to. Church, who am I speaking to? Can speaking in tongues then be the best way to pray? Yes. Hallelujah. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understands him, albeit in the spirits he speaks mysteries. In the spirit, meaning in the realm of God, in the realm unseen, he is talking about mysteries, decoded things that need decoding. That's what it means. Right? So he's telling you the purpose of speaking in tongues. When you speak in tongues, you are speaking to God. So that already tells you what to do. Someone asks you the question, have you spoken to God? A.K.A. Have you spoken in tongues? For when I speak in tongues. You know, when I dito prati shama katasia, I'm bring, bringing God into the narrative now. Yes. Do you understand this? Do you understand this? Because so I can pray about anything i can make god involved in anything and i don't even need my mind he loves me that much yes. hallelujah yes. hallelujah you know when i found out this thing i knew the way to success i just knew the way to strength i knew the way to stability i knew the way to walk out of envy and envy and bitterness let me tell you something when you get angry so much sit down and pray in the holy ghost stay there stay there pray in the holy ghost you come out a better person yes. Hallelujah. Because who you rub with, you become like. So when you are speaking in other tongues, you are actually embellishing yourself with the love of God. With the, with the love of God. So you are fellowshipping with love when you are praying in the Holy Ghost. Give yourself to it over and over and over and over. And over. You'll be able to walk over some things that others think is a big deal. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hey, he says, he that speaks in other tongues speaks unto God. Look at verse 3. But he that prophesied, remember it says, your focus should be on prophecy. And he's actually talking about in a public gathering. He says, he that prophesied, who does he speak to? Amen. Verse 3, who does he speak to? Amen. When I'm speaking in tongues, who am I speaking to? Amen. When I'm prophesying, who am I speaking to? Amen. Men, that is why prophecy is good uh, in the local church. Because it's an opportunity to actually bless Amen. men. Praise God. That's why he says, rather that he prophesy. So when I'm speaking in tongues, I am speaking to God. But when I interpret the tongues, I am blessing men. Praise God. Look at it, verse 3. But he that prophesied speaketh unto men to edification. 
So what, what are the contents of prophecy? Edification. They build up. Hallelujah. Church, hallelujah. When, when prophecy is done, you are built up. A lot of things that people call prophecy is not really prophecy. Amen. Prophecy at its, at its level, is, is, it builds up. Meaning when a prophecy is done, you feel charged, you feel better, you are like exalted, you are comforted if you are in a bad place. Praise the Lord. So it says, he that speak, he that, and that is why it is needed in the local church. So that people can be edified, people can be comforted, and people can be exalted. Look at it again, verse 3, he that prophesied speaketh. So your love work is that I seek the edification of the other person. How I show that I am walking in love is that my desire is not on me. Praise God. My desire is not on me. I am walking. Love never thinks of itself. Love thinks of the other person. So when I am actually in a local church, who should I be thinking about? On my good days and on my bad days, who should I be thinking about? Now that is the work of love on the inside of you. And so, you know, sometimes in life, things are going on in your life. It looks like things are really going on in your life. You've, you've got it all. And you're thinking in your mind, how can I actually at this point be thinking about other people? Give yourself to praying in tongues. Praying in tongues kills the selfishness in the believer that has heard the word. Amen. Church, amen. Listen, the natural man is selfish by nature. Sister, I realize that correct? When you take a picture... And we take a picture together. Who do you look at for? Who do you look for? Do you look at me first or do you look for you first? No, you can't be looking at me. You can't be looking at me. When you take a picture, it is just to show you the way we are born. I am like the other day, I'm going to say it. <laughs> she might like it, she might not like it, but. I want to take a picture with my sister Bimbola. You know, and when we took the picture, she was looking at it. And I was, I can promise you, she wasn't looking at me. She was looking at herself. Because that is the way man is. Strangely, I was looking at the picture too. Guess what? I wasn't looking at Sister Bimbola first. <laughs> That's the way man is. So the first normal way a believer will want to approach life will be selfishly. But now you are a new creation. The love of God is not sprinkled in you. The love of God is within you. God took love, I mean himself, and put it within you. In fact, your spirit is made of love. Hallelujah. If you act, and that's why people always say, what's going to happen? Like I said, I'm not preaching about heaven at the moment. So I know that. What's going to happen when I live off of this flesh? The real you manifest in fullness. Love. There is nothing like, why is it there is nothing like bitterness, hatred in heaven? Because everybody there is of one nature. And they can't borrow anything else. You know, in, in, on the world, in the world today, you are spirit, right? But you have a flesh. So there is a tendency to yield to evil. Right? But, but the fact is, now, when you... And the reason why is because of your body. The moment you drop this body, you are fully like God. And so, strife cannot even be there. Anger can be there. Malice can be there. All of those things that you need to renew your mind for today cannot be there. Why? You have dropped this wicked boy. The flesh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, when you, now, when you speak in other tongues, what do you do? You actually, you stir up yourself to live out the God life. You stir up yourself to do what you know to do. There are sometimes some people who tell me, Pastor, I know this is what I'm to do. But I just realized I'm not doing it. Pray in the Holy Ghost so that the real you can roar from within. Hallelujah. Church, hallelujah. So it says, he that prophesied, verse 3, speaketh unto men. So your purpose in life is men-centered. Hallelujah. Your love work is you thinking about men. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right, then look at it again. Look at verse 4. It looks like we're supposed to talk about tongues and interpretation, right? But we just cannot move past because of our time. Look at verse 4. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue, what does he do? Write it down. The best you is the you that has spoken in tongues. The best you. Hallelujah. The best you. 
He that speaketh in tongues, what does he do? Edifies himself. Okay, let's break down the word edify. Edify is from the Greek word um, oikodomio. House building. I remember I've been to a building site before. For one week is at this level. Then you return. As long as the laborers are working, you come back. It has moved up to another level. That's the word. Building. Oiko domio. Domio is house. Oiko. Building up yourself. Edification. When I'm speaking in tongues, I am building myself. I'm built up. Another word from that word edify is to charge up. <laughs> what do I do when I am in? Did you hear what Sister Simi said? In Grace Trains, we take testimonies that will bring you revelation on how to live. She said, sometimes because of what I, I'm going through, I am always, sometimes I'm always afraid. But what did she tell us that she was doing? She was praying the Holy Ghost. Yeah. He said, these things can be practiced. And you know, it would be stupid for me to be preaching it so good to you and not practice it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you know, it, it would be silly for me to force you to practice it. You must catch revelation so you can practice it. That's why I don't push people. Revelation must drive you. If not, when I'm not around, you won't do it. The poor Kalis. Do you, do you see why now? I will tell you we are doing this. So for example, just for this note, we are, in, we are going on evangelism on Saturday. From 1 to 3. That's all. It's going to be at Irit. Like we say, if you want to come, come. If you don't want to come, don't come. But the people that will come, will come. Because what drives the Vele Prokisto Pharmacies? What drives it? Is conviction. Nobody would say, but that doesn't drive anybody. Do you, are you a goat? <laughs> <laughs> Must you be beaten? No! Hallelujah! You are giving revelation. The church grows by revelation. I commend you to God and to his word of his grace, which is able to build you up. And give the inheritance among the saints. Praise God. He that speaketh in other tongues edifieth himself. He charges up himself. Am I in a place of timidity? I know what to do. I know what to do. I know what to do. And even if I'm weak to know what to do, you call a brother. You call a brother. Say, start this thing up for me. At the moment, you know, Pastor is like an excited preacher. So he seems like he always just goes from zero to hundred in five minutes. Ah, but me, at the moment, oh, I won't lie to you. This thing, I don't. I feel like breaking someone's head. I don't want to rack up, oh, oh, oh. please. Can you start this thing for me? That's why we are brethren. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You call somebody. If we don't start praying in tongues now, I will kill that brother. I say, Yeah, yeah, you're a good believer. Let's start. Yeah. Because you can't stay praying in the Holy Ghost and want to do evil. Yeah. Stay long enough. Stay long enough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that the supernatural life is not uh, just tales by moonlight. Stay long enough. Hallelujah. Consecrate yourself to edify yourself. So you live a better life. Praise God. You don't fall down. You don't break away. You don't collapse like a $2 suitcase. Any little challenge. Pray in the Holy Ghost. So challenge will be telling, Amen. We have tried that brother. Ha. That brother. Challenge is telling challenge. Are you sure that's where you want to go? I didn't win in 94. I didn't win in 2004. <laughs> I didn't win in 2014. You want to go in 2024? All the best. Because you are someone that's giving himself to... Ed See, listen, why will God tell you to speak in tongues and edify yourself if you didn't need it? This is the only gift of the Spirit, tongues and interpretation, that is exclusive to the New Testament church. Every other operation of the Spirit is actually in the Old Testament. Healing was in the Old Testament. Descending of spirits. People saw angels in the Old Testament. People prophesied in the Old Testament. Hallelujah. People, the gifts of healing in the Old Testament. The working of miracles, Elijah and Elisha did it. Why would God give the saints? Why? He wants them to be built up. They still have a flesh. He that speaketh in other tongue edifieth himself. See, I give myself, I give myself to, edification. to edification. Hey, I give myself, I give myself to, edification. to edification. Now, who is built up when you speak in tongues? Now, but we don't stop there. We don't. Stop there. We don't. Stop there. Church, we don't. Stop to stop there will be that I did not walk in love. 
Look at it. I didn't say so. Where did God say we should do as our proof that we are walking in love? From verse 1. Desire spiritual gifts and rather that you may. Rather that you may. So all that we have been talking about tongues, tongues, tongues as it relates to devotional gift. We are talking about building up our self. But we don't stop there because if we stop there, we have not gotten into prophecy. And so we have not actually operated the love walk.